here is outline what it is that we actually want to do and that's I want a drum to play a beat and animate the beat at the same time. Now clearly we haven't got a drum here so we'll get rid of this bloke and then go and f whoops that got rid of the thing that's a bit of a worry. We'll come back to that later of course that whatever appears in that scripting area is pertinent to the sprite so if we delete the sprite whatever's there is going to disappear. So let's go and find a drum. That's a nice one, the one there labelled Drum, surprisingly. There we go. Uh, let's right click and add a comment. And the comment is, I want to play a beat and animate the beat at the same time. Okay, so you might say, right, well, what we're we going to do, let's see what costumes, or no, we'll just get the beat to play a beat first. So how are we going to do that? Well, we need some music. Say hello, no, where is it? When sensing looks uh, sound. That's what we want. And, oh, look, there's a handy one there. Let's play a sound until done, or start a sound. Now, there's a subtle difference between the two, but I'm going to choose start a sound. Okay. Now, we want that to, to go on for a while, so I'm going to need to control how often that happens, and in this instance, I'm going to need it forever. And then, let's see what that's like. Put those two together. Now, we don't need to decide at this stage on what event we're going to use to start this script, because we can just click on that forever, and it will make the sound. In fact, any block, if we click on it, not very bright and loud is it? there we go each time I click on it you can see that there's a yellow round band around this that pops up there it goes very quick if I do it a couple of times you'll see it more easily okay so that's working all right well let's put that inside the forever and click that and see what happens oops all right, so clearly that's happening far too quickly. So we're going to need to get something to slow it down a bit. Well, let's go and get this and let's see what that does. Sounds a bit funereal, doesn't it? So let's make it happen a little bit faster. Make it 0.5 seconds and we won't need to click that. In fact, if we click up here, nothing's gonna happen because there is no block that says start it. So we're just testing this. We're breaking it down. Notice that each individual step of this was a sort of a, a, a reverse decomposition. We started with, okay, can we get it to play a noise? What's the noise like? And we wanted to make it play forever. And then we realized that we needed some time. Okay, so let's click on forever now. Yeah, that looks all right. Okay, terrific. Now I'm not gonna start that with any block just yet at all. The other thing I want to do is to make that appear visually so that it's actually doing something. It's a little bit small at the moment. I might just make that double the size. There we go. And put it in the middle. You might place it differently on the stage. That doesn't really matter. And um, let's go and have a look at its costumes. What have we got? Well, we've got the costume you can see there at the moment. And then we've got a costume that looks like that. Okay, so let's say, all right, well, what we'd like to do now is to change to the next costume. So there's a thing in here somewhere. There it is, next costume. So what if we click on that? Well, it is changing to the next costume, but it's pretty boring, isn't it? So let's make that a little bit different. Let's just go to the costumes and let's just say, okay, I don't, these things here are largely irrelevant, so I'm going to get rid of those, those little beaty things. And I'm going to click this and notice that the whole lot gets selected in one go and I'm going to flip that vertically. Now I think you can see where I'm heading here because now when I go back to my code and I say next costume, it looks like the drum is actually beating, which is pretty cool. Now we could put that underneath here, but for reasons which I'll go into later, I, I want to do it slightly differently. We still need a, a, a forever, which is a control loop. So there we go. And I'm sure if I click on that, it goes a little bit too quickly. And we'll click on it again to stop it. And let's put in a weight. Well, let's put in the same weight as we had for the other bloke. Uh, put in 0.5. Right, and click on forever. Bump, 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 bump. All right, that doesn't look too bad. Let's have a look at this one. No, 
wonder if you can see what the problem is here. Let's get both of them to happen at exactly the same time. So we're going to go to events and we're going to choose that. And we're going to get another one and do that. Now this means that both of them are going to be starting at the same time. An instance of parallelism as you'll come across later. And the thing that starts it, the start block is the same. And that means that both of them are going to start at exactly the same time. Now we can click this. However, notice that I haven't got any other sprites in there yet. If I had other sprites in there and I had them starting with the green flag and we're doing something reasonably complex and something went wrong, it may be difficult to work out which script is running that's causing the problem because all of them are starting at the same time. So I'm not going to do that for the moment, but it is worthwhile sometimes just disconnecting these from the green flag or whatever you've got starting them if you've got more than one sprite. So if you've got more than one sprite, and you will, uh, just disconnect them from whatever's starting them so that they are out of the picture. Um, we decompose it so that we're only dealing with one sprite at a time. So let's try this, put him back up, click that, and let's see what happens. Okay, well, it's getting there, but notice that the drum is beating when the sticks are in the air. Now, I don't know about you, but that's never worked for me. Air guitar, maybe, but not air drums. So let's say the next costume, uh, the start sound, we could do this one of two ways, I suppose. We could say, wait one second. In other words, it's going to beat every half a second and it's going to wait half a second. Let's see if that works. No, no. I got it around the wrong way, haven't I? But suck it and see is always worthwhile. 0.25, make it half the load time. And let's see what happens now. Fantastic. Now we've got it beating at the same time. Now we've got a generalization that's happening here so that if we wanted to we could go find another sprite and we'll choose music and we'll choose, I don't know, symbol maybe? I don't know. Let's choose symbol and we'll put symbol across here for the sake of it and then what we want to do is we want the symbol to do much the same thing. So what we can do is to pick this up and drop it on top of symbol and pick this up and drop it on top of symbol and notice that they maybe hide behind one another but there they are. Now we don't want to start the, the low tom, we want a, um, a crash symbol, that'll do. And if we swap it from one to the other and do it in exactly the same time it should work okay. Now our timing might need to be sorted here and you'll see how we can do that in a minute. Oh, that's not bad. But what if we wanted to do the cymbal crash on the offbeat? I wonder if you could think, see, that we might do this. Let's try that. No, it's still the same, isn't it? What could we do to make that change so that the cymbal goes on the offbeat and the drums go on the um, onbeat, if you want to call it that. So I'm going to leave you to work that out. What we've done is to define clearly what it is that we want to do. We've broken this down, so we're only doing a bit at a time. When we only do a bit at a time, we don't even need a starting thing. We can just click on this and it will happen and click to turn it off. Or you could click up here to turn it off. Of course, that stops everything. And then once we've got one thing working exactly how we want, we can start working on the other thing. And then when we've got both of them working, we can hook them both up so that they start simultaneously. They start on the same time and you boot. Now, we have developed and seen a pattern here and we generalize it and say well that pattern can pretty much work so you drag it on top of the drum symbols and you use the same algorithm to generate the same piece of code as an algorithm the change that's made in the code is what sound you're actually making there you go so the debugging techniques that we've used here is to break things down into their little bits if something goes wrong disassociate disassociate, 
Remember, you've got them over here as well. Disassociate, disassociate, and then go and work on the thing that you think is, is causing the problem. Click on it without a starting event. And make sure it works exactly right. If you're not too sure what's going on, then pull bits out and decompose it and decompose it and decompose it until such time as you find the thing that is causing whatever problem you happen to have. Okay. I shall leave you with this wonderful sound. You decide whether it's wonderful or not. We'll hook them all back together and we'll go. Right, I've got a headache now, so I'm going to go away. Bye.